Welcome to Drinks Coach, another roundup, Christmas thing. Um, yeah, it's probably a little bit too late for some of you to get some of these things in for Christmas Day itself, but so what? Uh, for those people yesterday who saw, or day before now, um, saw Reverend Hubert's Winter Gin Liqueur. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Um, thank you very much, Wilfred. Um, sporting a very fine tabard there, that's Wilfred. Um, I don't want to knock anything around too much. Um, yes, it was on uh, Sunday brunch, and uh, it turns out uh, that Gary Barlow thinks it's the best drink he's ever had, and he's ordered three bottles. And it turns out he's a local, so I went round to deliver it to him. So isn't that nice? Um, yeah, so success with uh, Reverend Hubert. Thank you very much for those who supported. And please, please carry on buying. There's plenty of stock more. It's the beginning of winter. It doesn't say Christmas gin liqueur now, does it? Uh, perfect for taking with you for apres ski. Uh, when it's chilly and snowy here, you'll be wishing you had some. Um, but as Pratesh Modi demonstrated with a plum on Sunday brunch the other day, he made the most amazing hot toddy. He just mixed uh, Oloroso sherry, but a Montalado will do one-to-one -one, uh, with Reverend Hubert and then mixed it, then won that one-to-one -one again with um, cranberry juice, which had been heated up with some orange and lemon, made a hot toddy out of it. It was absolutely delicious. Uh, I think I might have another one later. Anyway, we're now talking, because I did a World Whiskey Roundup, about Scots Scottish malt whiskey. Um, these are three. There's one missing. I went to Asda, couldn't find it. Waitrose is selling it. John Lewis Partnership, never knowingly undersold, so they've matched the amazing price. But one of my session malts par excellence is Old Pulteney, 12-year-old. Maybe going to your Asda, maybe going to your Waitrose. They have promised me that stock will return and that it was just a blip because they weren't expecting such a demand. £25 for a delicious whiskey, sherry finished, Simple but really warm and rounded and easy to drink. Um, comes under the banner of winter session malt, I think. Right, so we've got three other malt whiskies here, which I'd like to tell you about. Feta Can. Feta Can, 12-year-old. Uh, this is a whiskey I tend to reach for if I want something a bit more heathery, with a kind of a kiss, maybe a hint or maybe a suggestion of brine. Uh, this is from the Highlands, but from the Highlands is a big place. Um, this is from the East Highlands, I don't know, about... Half an hour's drive south of Aberdeen, I think, <coughs> near Monrose or Montrose. Um, so it's kind of near the North Sea. Um, if you look at the colour, uh, it's not dark, dark. It looks like there might be some uh, new white oak in there a little bit. There might be a, a hint of a few sherry barrels. But generally speaking, it's not one of these big, heavy, heady whiskies, which is kind of popular at Christmas, right? Um, and I bought this from Whiskey Exchange. Uh, it was a wholesome six pounds off, I think. So it was um, reaching for the lower 30 pounds. Normally it's about 40 quid, I think. I think I paid 33 or 34 or something for it. It's got the most beautiful smell, which that part of Scotland reminds me of. There are some whiskey uh, distilleries that have closed. Um, very, uh, uh, Rosebank was one that rings, me, rings a bell with me. And it smells of heather and honey and blossom. And um, I love that. Kind of switches of slight mint and hawthorn and then the warm, lovely kind of floral heathery note, which is just fab. Um, that's kind of the merest hint of spruce. But then it has this warm, kind of almost hot, warm, custody, um, creamy note to it. When you taste it, it starts off sweet, the entry is nice and sweet, then you get the taste of some um, navel orange rind, like really ripe Portuguese oranges. A little bit of coffee, a little hint of coffee on the end, a little bit of fig, dried fig. It's a really nice drink, and it's a very complex drink. And what I love about it is it actually has lots of vibrancy for a 12-year-old. I know 12 year olds are mega old, but older than most of the whiskies we tend to drink these days. Most people can't afford to drink whiskey with an age designation that often. And, of course, with whiskey, unlike port, I need to point out that everything in here is older than 12 years old. That's the rule. Um, and I don't know, what can I say? I think that's wonderful. It looks fetching. Uh, beautiful, beautiful whiskey. Moving on to a real surprise. Um... Partly because the whiskey that's in this bottle, um, I 
you bought some from the whiskey exchange from the shop in Great Portland Street in London, which is like this kind of cathedral to whiskey. It's like Toys R Us for people like me. It's like, oh, I don't know what to choose. It's so amazing. Um, and it's like, yeah, it's like Obbins on steroids. Um, and the most amazing shop. And um, a very nice lady in there gave me some good advice. But I picked a Highland whiskey, this time from the West Highlands, um, from near Fort William. Uh, you know, it looks like somebody's put an axe through the middle of Scotland. Um, sort of south of Loch Ness, a bit further down towards the Mull of Lord, is it Lorne? I think it is. Um, uh, or the Firth of Lorne. Um, there's right in the middle, pretty much, if you if you, if you you made a, a bullseye out of um, Scotland. Couldn't imagine why you'd want to do that. Um, there is a distillery, and the distillery is Ben Nevis Distillery. Uh, it's pretty near some mountains, judging by the Google map I looked at. So maybe it's right next to Ben Nevis, which is the tallest um, point in the um, in the United Kingdom. The reason why I'm saying all of this is because I bought some Ben Nevis 10-year-old. I think it cost me about £50 earlier in the year and took it to a very posh hotel called the Tewton Glen Hotel to do a very fine a fine whiskey tasting for a, gr a group of well-heeled but enthusiastic whiskey amateurs. Uh, and I drove all the way down to Bournemouth to do so. And they were great fun. And uh, I remember thinking the Ben Nevis, because it was the first whiskey in the lineup, it was not finished in any sherry barrels, quite pale. But it was one of my absolute kind of like eye-openers. I was really just surprised how wonderfully delicious the malt was. And it was kind of an all-year-round malt. So it had heathery notes, had some citrusy notes, had some very floral notes. But at the same time, had this kind of pumping heart of power um it's quite sleek i've been trying i've been looking at whiskey exchange ever since um february trying to see if it was back into stock and eventually i saw it come into stock i saw a ben nevis 10 year old come into stock at 137 pounds and i went bloody hell what's happened to this someone must have bought a lot of stock i don't know if this is related but the lovely people at whiskey exchange i think partly because i've been talking about them quite a lot why wouldn't I? They're amazing business. And Dawn Davis, I love you. Um, um, the lovely Annabelle in their press department got got them to send me this. And it says, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Love from the Whiskey Exchange. Isn't that lovely? And it's at the bottom, Highland Single Malt Scotch Whiskey. Now, they have this amazing, hairy expert at the Whiskey Exchange called Billy, who is seen as one of the great whiskey experts in this country. And he helps Dawn... Um, I'm sure does quite a lot of the real kind of like hard work in, in collecting and selecting fine whiskies for the whiskey exchange. Um, if you, as you can see from the colour of this whiskey, this is darker than the feta can, um, has a wonderful kind of uh, copper rusty colour to it. Not super dark again, but you know, halfway down, dark enough. And I discovered that their malt whiskey, which they're selling as their Christmas gift, you can buy this in this wonderful tin, really high quality packaging. Look at this lovely packaging in this sort of like a lovely textured can with a lovely bronze lid. And you open it and it's wrapped in beautiful paper. And you can get that to say, Dear Joe Wadsack, I think you're the best presenter on TV, for example. Um, and uh, you can have it bottled like that. This is 48%, way above protein stability. Um, it's Ben Nevis. It doesn't say how old this is. Certainly tastes like it's of a reasonable age. Certainly eight years old plus, perhaps. There may be some early uh, early stocks in there, which is the reason why it doesn't have an age designation. Um, and I can't remember where I found this out. But anyway, they only made 900 bottles. And it says, matured in cherry, cherry, cherry casks. This is one of 900 bottles. If I'd seen that, I would have ordered another one and opened it. So what? The, what's the fuss? Um, it's fifty pounds, but that includes your bespoke labelling. It's just heaven. This is just such a heavenly whiskey for Christmas. I think of anything, it proves that sometimes, if a judiciously chosen barrels of whiskey for own label can often be every bit as special as the most famous bottlings from it within house or from super sexy um, bottlers and uh, uh, conditioners like Gordon and McPhail and people like that. So is this worth the extra 20 quid, uh, 15 quid? Is it bloody hell? Yes. Um, absolutely delicious. Um, I, I read Billy's tasting note on this. 
and I'm, I'm inclined to agree with him until I start looking for them because the Ben Nevis expression I had earlier in the year was such a sort of like mid-weight, racy, complex, more refined, more bone china style whiskey rather than these big full throttle whiskies. Um, I wasn't thinking it in the same context he was, but he's obviously chosen this as a Christmas Highland special. And um, it has the smell of milk chocolate and praline. There's a hint of banana ester there as well. It's kind of wintry goodness. It's kind of Christmas chocolatey puddings. There's some dried currants in there, like mince pies. And then a very strong, broad, round citrus. Ruby grapefruit and cooked oranges and... There's pomegranate, and it's just a it tastes of Christmas. And I just want to say this is one of the best whiskies I've tasted all year. And this is a weight a whiskey exchange own label. Once the nine hundred bottles are over, I'm imagining that they're over. And um, I thought it was fantastic, absolutely delicious. Thank you and well done, whiskey exchange. Coming on to my discovery of the year, I bought this with my hard earned social security, with the shekels given to me um, during this lockdown. And what we've got here is a Speyside. Speyside is the engine room of Scottish whiskey. It's where the big, famous collectibles come from, like the Macallan. This is the Glenallachy. Um, this is Glenallachy, 10-year-old, with green label. This is a cask strength. Look how dark that is. It must be the Asian Pedro Ximenez barrels and old Oloroso casks. Uh, but it's very dark in colour. It's cask strength, which means it's bottled at the strength that came out of the barrel, which is, in this case, over 56% pure. What can I say? This is I discovered Glenallachy this year. I was looking on the internet and watching other people's shows about what whiskies I might want to try for my own uh, Christmas pleasure. And um, the master still of Billy Walker seems to be kind of cropping up on every single Scotch whiskey show from here to literally Timbuktu. I've seen shows from, in South Africa, shows in Australia, shows in America, lots of shows from Scotland. And they're all going, oh, Glenallachy, what a discovery. Well, anyway, so let's have a look. Um, I'm drinking this cask strength and neat. Normally I would water this down a little bit because that's the way I am and I'm a bit like that. Um, so wintry and deep. Uh, this is batch four. Uh, I tried the batch three as well, which is very, very nice. Very, very nice. A lot of wood. You can taste the rancio and the oxidativeness given from the the, the wine that's that's in the casks that the wine has been aged in, the whiskey has been aged in for so long. It has wonderful toffeeish edges. Uh, it's the taste of persimmon. I can't get more Christmas than that. And dates. Um, there's a little hint of smoke. There's a heathery whisper of peat but nothing crazy what can i say that's 60 quid or maybe you can get a bit of change out of that 55 or something like that but um i'm really glad i did um non-chill filtered 10 year 10 year age expression look at that glenallachy you saw this label first it, I, I, i'm running out of shows that i haven't seen on youtube about whiskey because i always like to see what the people think and this comes up time and time again uh bitter chocolate and oranges Wonderful. Um, Dundee marmalade in there as well. So, Feta Can. Psst, Ben Evis. Whiskey Exchange Highland Special Reserve. Glenallachy, 10-year-old car strength. And don't forget, Old Pulteney. Old Pulteney, 12-year-old. Asda and Waitrose, 25 quid. What are you waiting for? Get out there before somebody else nabs it. See you next time. Mm -hmm.